we just received a massive MZC development update as we do at the end of every month. Talking about Halo 3 customization, new weapons coming to Halo 3, a new season announced, as well as ODST flighting updates with a game changing update I think you'll all love, and when to expect public flighting for ODST. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these news informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button so it lets me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps more people get a chance to see this video so they can stay in the know with everything going on with Halo. And make sure to subscribe to catch up all the information as we ramp up to Halo Infinite. Well, July has come and passed and as we do at the end of every month, we get a big boy update for development of the MCC posted by Postums on Halo Waypoint. So in this video, might go into all the details I think you're going to want to know about this. This is a really big update. I'm not going to be able to cover everything in just this video. I'm going to have to separate this out for bite-sized pieces so you all do enjoy. So make sure you subscribe to catch those future videos. So let's get right into it. With the release of Halo 3 ODSC coming out late this summer onto PC, it also has been confirmed by 343 that it's going to be bringing Season 3 with it. And with Season 3, it's been bringing a lot more customization, expanding on things like new weapon skins, new visors, and other content content for Halo 3. The screenshot I'm going to show you guys right here kind of shows what we're talking about as we have the ODST Magnum in Halo 3 right here with a crazy new like graffiti looking battle rifle skin on top of that. Pretty freaking awesome in my opinion. Another awesome screenshot they showcase here is the Silence SMG in Halo 3 on Guardian. Now I'm assuming this is probably going along with all the other kinds of uh, user skins. This is probably just like a weapon skin that you can probably put, it'll, I'm sure it'll probably function the exact same way as an SMG in Halo 3, but you can have the aesthetic of the ODST SMG, which I mean, does look pretty freaking awesome. I would like to play this in Halo 3. It'd be pretty sweet. Looking forward to it. Now, a common question I do receive a lot is when a new season comes around, goes like, well, is the last season gonna go away? No, this is not like your typical battle pass or season pass you see in other games like in Fortnite or Call of Duty or, or even Destiny. The seasons are gonna stay, so you'll still be able to unlock your season one. You'll still be able to lock, unlock your season two. But they're just gonna be adding on season three on top of that. Though this does mean that uh, your seasonal challenges might be going away. As uh, the challenges for 058, thanks Ms. Raya and Trusty Sidekick will no longer be available in season two because those are tied to the challenge system for the seasonals. Now, they did mention about how you will be able to unlock your gold camos uh, in another way later on, but as of right now, at the end of the season, they will be going away. So right now, if you have not unlocked all your gold camos for CE, now is the time to grind because you only have a few weeks until ODC releases on PC. Now, this next section talks about ODST's firefight as it will be coming with the uh, release of ODST on PC. So people on Xbox and PC will be able to enjoy firefight. And this is gonna be pretty awesome, guys, to look at this. So uh, to quote what uh, is said in here directly saying, players are gonna be able to look forward to ODST's firefight, which will include all the legacy content, meaning all 10 maps, all the classic settings, variations, and then some. We've also conducted several upgrades across the board for the first time. We have upgraded the networking and the asynchronous networking and dedicated server model like we have in Halo Reach's firefight. This represents a serious improvement over the networking model, which is used in co-op campaign gameplay. The next big upgrade is matchmaking for Firefight. This will be comparable to what we have for Halo Reach. Players can expect to see a survival themed option and an arcade themed option to support the newly introduced game variants for ODST Firefight. Players can look forward to new options like customizing your starting weapons, movement speed, player gravity, time limit, set limits, number of lives, damage output, and more. Not quite to the standards of reach, but pretty dang close. For example of what they're talking about, they showcase different settings like the damage multiplier and the starting weapon here is quite interesting. It's the battle rifle. Yes, you can play with the battle rifle in 
ODST. Probably not that hard to bring, carry over, but uh, thematically we've never had a chance to play with the Battle Rifle in ODST, and since it's such a core weapon within the Halo 3 sandbox, it's quite awesome to have it back in Firefight, so really looking forward to that. This is absolutely massive. This is something I was expecting, but I was really, really hoping for, and I'm really glad to see that it's coming to the MCC with ODST's Firefight. Matchmaking was sorely missed when it came to the original experience that a lot of people, either like me, didn't really get a chance to play it too much, or a lot of people just flat out didn't play it. I've known people in the community who just don't really know what ODST's Firefight is like, and people still say that it is the best Firefight in the franchise, and it's the first one. So it's much more survival, much more difficult to get through. So when you get through the end of a match in Firefight, it's very, very rewarding. And so it's quite exciting to see that they're bringing matchmaking into this experience. I cannot wait to get a chance to play it. If we're getting into the flight program, it's most likely we will. I will definitely be making content on it, guys, so you guys can check out that. Since we're talking about ODST, they also bring in some extra information of confirmed content we will have for ODST's Firefight. Now, obviously we've had confirmed con content before, but then end up having to be taken away. So keep that in mind that things are subject to change, but these are the things that they're looking to bring into ODST's Firefight. One is the updated customization will be available for o Halo 3 ODST. Firefight matchmaking and Firefight custom games and theater mode as well. For the campaign side of things, looking to do the campaign mission of Mombasa Streets, Teari Plaza, Uplift Reserve, New Mombasa Police Department Headquarters, Data Hive, and Coastal Highway, which is Coastal Highway. Oof, that mission. <laughs> That's a good one right there. As well as the campaign playlist on top of that. Now, the awesome content I'm sure a lot of you are looking forward to is just the firefight multiplayer options. For the maps, we're going to have Crater, Night, Rally, Night, Crater, Lost, Platoon, Windward, Chasm 10, and Last Exit. And the playlist uh, Firefight Heroic and Firefight Arcade. Now I'm sure hearing about all this awesome ODST content that you're looking forward to playing, you're probably thinking, okay, well, when are we gonna be able to play this? When is Ring 3 gonna start? Well, they're currently involved with the Ring 1 process. Ring 1 Ring 2 are kind of a blurred line kind of situation. Uh, so Ring 3, they do mention that they're looking to roll out possibly within the first few weeks of August. Now this, there are no confirmed dates on this one, so I can't give you guys a confirmed date exactly when, but probably the first half of August we'll get a chance to play some ODST on PC. And trust me, once we do get a confirmed date and when those flights will start, I will definitely make a video guys to keep you guys all up to date with all the ODST awesomeness happening on this channel. And to finish this out for this video, we do have a list of confirmed items that are going to be coming to the MCC for 2020. Now they don't have a confirmed date of when these will be implemented, but guys, this has now been officially confirmed that these features, which are key features that need to be in this game, are going to be coming to the MCC in 2020. First item being crossplay, input based matchmaking, server region selection, custom game browser, per game graphics options, per game audio options, mouse and keyboard support for Xbox, PC file share, double keybinds for all games, view model adjustments for all games in-game FPS cap and adjustments, and Steam account linking. Also in this blog update, they do mention how crossplay and the custom browser and all these, some of these other features are currently in development at the moment, which is absolutely huge. Crossplay will be a gigantic boost in population for the MTC and really help improve the experience of matchmaking when it comes to playing these games nowadays. So that's, you know, when you're playing late at night, you come across a lot of the same people. That's very understandable. Bringing in crossplay, they're going to have to do input based matchmaking. So, not just crossplay, there's a few other things backpacking on top of that that are going to be involved with it. Uh, they do mention that there's going to be uh, planned releases together, as in uh, the planned releases for crossplay will be crossplay, input based matchmaking, and server region selection. Another group that's going to be all released together in one package is going to be the custom game browser, per game graphics options, and mouse and keyboard support as well. Which, dude, like. Uh, besides custom game browser being absolutely awesome and absolutely necessary for this game, per game graphics options is going to be so important uh, because there's a lot of games in the MCC that work really well for unlimited frames and games that well, don't really work so well for unlimited frames. Like you have, Hody you have Halo 3, Halo 2 Classic, and CE Classic all work really well for unlimited frames. All the other games like uh, uh, Halo 2 Anniversary, uh, Reach, 
and also Halo CE Anniversary don't really play out super well for unlimited graphics. So I'm really glad to look forward to that because pretty much whenever I'm playing this game and playing multiple games, I'm just putting on 60 FPS. It stinks because there's a huge difference between 60 FPS and unlimited, especially in Halo 3 and all the other games that actually unlimited frames works well. But they are currently working on uh, in design right now at the moment as they're drafting up ways to work around how to fix the frame rates when it comes to Reach and Halo 2 Anniversary. As stated before, there is so much information to go through this blog update. I'm going to separate it up in different videos, so make sure you guys subscribe to keep yourselves updated to the next content update we got for you guys on this channel here. Make sure you, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like as it greatly helps out the video and channel. If you learned something today or there's something part in particular you really like about this, make sure to leave a comment down below as I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. Thanks so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Check out the videos on the screen right now if you miss any content from me. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.